Welcome to module 9.3. In this lesson, you learn about moment connections. Moment connections transfer the bending moment from the beam and are also classified and designed as rigid connections. This type of connection requires careful design and is unlikely to be standardized. The connection would often have stiffeners, heavy welds and other strengthening plates to transfer the moments and forces. The cost of fabrication and design will therefore be higher. Go ahead and open up Project A. The project opens in the 3D view. The dataset continues from Module 8.2. In this lesson, we're going to place a moment connection between the column and the beam. We're going to place that connection in this location here. So we'll begin by zooming up on the model. And first, before we place the connection, we need to load in that connection type. To do that, we'll select the steel ribbon and on the steel ribbon, we'll select connection settings. In the connection settings dialog box, we're first going to filter our list of connections. To do this, we can select the connection group and here we're going to select column beam. You can see that this reduces the number of available connections and just makes it easier to select the connection we want. And in this case, we're looking for near frame bolted with haunch. You can either double click this to add it across or you can click the add button here. Once we've added that across, we'll select OK to this structural connection settings dialog and that's now loaded in. Before we place out this structural connection, we first need to check that our level of detail is set to fine. So on the view control toolbar, let's set this to fine. We'll now select our members that we want to connect. So we'll begin by selecting the column. We'll then hold down a control key and select the rafter. And now we can select the steel ribbon and on the steel ribbon, we'll select connection. In the properties palette in the type selector, you'll note that Revit starts by placing out a generic connection. We'll change this and swap this out for our knee connection. Revit will produce a warning here and it's basically telling us that the start end join cutbacks or any cuts that we've made to the steel work is now going to be ignored. That's absolutely fine. And now you can see our connections placed. We'll begin by setting the material that we want to use for our various different plates. To do this, I'm just going to move over the connection and then press the tab key to select the haunch. In the properties palette, in the instance properties, you can see the material is currently set to steel carbon. I'm going to select the browse button here and we'll just make some edits to this material. So I'll begin by going to the appearance tab and we'll change our type. And here I'm just going to use anodized aluminium. The only reason I'm using this is we can go ahead and select a tint for this and we'll select a nice bright orange color. We can then click on the color and also we'll select bright orange here as well. That's going to set the color of our anodized aluminium. And if I select the graphics tab, finally here, I can use our render appearance. If I click OK to the dialog box here, you'll now see that our material looks much nicer. And we can see what's actually happening here. So we're now ready to configure this connection. So I'm going to begin by selecting a connection and then in the properties palette, I'll select edit type. In the type properties dialog box, we can now 3D orbit round and actually get a nice view on our connection. So of course, we're going to use this as the preview as we configure the various different elements of this connection. Before we go ahead and make those changes, we first need to duplicate the connection type and give this a meaningful name. So here I'm going to call this one column rafter connection and we'll click OK. So we can now go ahead and modify our parameters and start to configure the various different elements of our connection. To do this, we can select the edit button just in here. So let's begin by configuring our haunch. So you can see here that we have our haunch cut from the same material as our universal beam. So that's our 4571267. Of course, if we wanted to change that, we could uncheck this uh, option here and then we could set our section size in there. So we'll then select the length of the haunch. That's going to be 1850. And we'll select the depth of our haunch, which will be 400. We'll leave the chamfers set to 20 and 20. And then we can move on to the next area here, which is going to be the end plate. So for the end plate, I'm going to leave the thickness set to 20 millimeters. And we've got a number of different options as to how we can size our end plate. We could say exact value from top or exact value from bottom. But in this case here, I'm going to use projections. 
So what I want to do is set a projection from the top at 30 millimeters. You can now see that's popped up there. And we'll set the bottom again for 30 millimeters. This will allow for a weld between the top and the bottom. We'll also set our width here. I'm going to set that to 250. Of course, we're using a 254 column section, so 250 will fit that quite nicely. OK, let's now configure the bolts and welds. So we'll select bolts and welds, and first we'll select the bolts area here. And I'm going to change my bolt diameter to M24. And I'll change my bolt assembly from standard to with washers. Now, if I do this, you can see that Revit then adds a washer at the head of the bolt and also at the back face of the nut as well, as you can see just in here. So we'll now set up our bolt groups. So we can select on bolt groups here. And the first thing I want to do is set three bolts across this area of the connection here. So I'll just change that to three. And we can now see we've got three bolts there. We'll set our intermediate distance here to something like 150 millimeters. And that's looking quite nice there. And then for group two, we'll have two bolts Again, we'll set our intermediate distance to 150 there, and perhaps we'll just set the start distance here to 175. So next, we can review the welds. Um, I'm going to leave those at six, but of course, we could change any aspect of that that we wanted. We can also set up additional welds, any reinforcements that we wanted to add into that connection, as well as the configuration of slots, basically on the plate, the main beam, or all of those elements. Let's now move on to some stiffeners. So here we're going to select stiffeners. So you can see here that we'll start by placing out a stiffener at the bottom beam flange. So that's going to be position number two. And we'll set that to a full stiffener in there. We'll make the thickness 15. And also I want that to be sloped to match in with the same angle and make that parallel to the bottom flange of my beam. I'd also add another stiffener at position three. So again, that will be a full stiffener in here. And in this case, I'll leave this one horizontal. Of course, we could now configure the stiffener further. We could add in some chamfers here. We could sort of double up the web or we could have slope stiffeners in here that we wanted. But that's good for us. And our connection is now complete. So we'll select OK to the Edit Connection dialog. And we'll select OK again to the Type Properties. And now we can review our new structural connection. So let's now move on and design the connection to EC3. To do this, we'll select our connection. And in the properties palette, I'm going to override this by the instance. You'll need to do that in order to access the design area. We can then select the edit button just below. And now we can access properties. We'll then select code checking. And we'll begin by setting our bending moment. So the bending moment is going to be 130. We'll then set our axial force at two and our shear force will set to 210. To calculate, we can then select check and you may have to click this a couple of times actually to get this to work. And you'll now see that the checks failed. If we go ahead and look at the verification here, we can actually see that it's the minimum or maximum bolt edge distance. Now, if we wanted to see what the limits were, we could go into our report here and we could now scroll down through the report and we can see all these various different areas. And you can see here that we have now that failure. So let's now go back and actually fix this problem. So we'll close down the report. We'll go to our bolts and welds. We'll select bolt groups. And I'm going to change the start distance on my bolts here to perhaps 100 and our start distance here to 225. So we can now see the model update in the background here. And once again, we'll go back to properties, code checking, and we'll check again. And we can now see that the check is OK. So now we can go back and review that report. And we should now see that the bolts have passed that test now. And again, if we scroll back down through here, we can see all of the other different verifications in here, along with the utilization for each particular area of the connection design. OK, so we'll close down the report. We'll close down our dialog box here. Let's make sure that we've saved our project. And that concludes this exercise.